Welcome to another episode of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikov. I'm Mark McCluskey. Benjamin Christie. We're going to be cooking at the Banjo Patterson Cottage Restaurant on the Parramatta River near Sydney. A really interesting building, an interesting history, and some great food happening at the restaurant as well. And um, Mark, what are you cooking? Well, today, Vic, I thought I might cook um, a little bit of a different dish. I'm going to use some polenta, some coconut cream, and some wildfire charred corn. It's going to be very interesting. Asian meets Australia. Great. And so the wildfire spice is the combination of native herbs. So that's the seasoning, a little bit of a twist. That's right. So as always, we take a recipe inspired from the location that we visit, and then we put a little bit of a spin on it, usually with a native Australian twist. Benjamin, what are you doing, mate? I'm going to be doing some succulent Australian steak. It's yep. grain-fed steak. And I'm doing it with some broccolini. And it's going to be crusted with a cudra, which is Australian bush tomato. Okay, that's terrific. One of my favourite flavours as well, that, uh, the, the bush tomato. We'll have a little bit more to say about the ingredients a little later. Myself, I'm preparing a dish which in fact I cooked quite some years ago or designed it quite a few years ago for the, uh, the bid for the Sydney Olympic Games. And it's going to be a boomerang trifle uh, with some sponge cake jelly, uh, some interesting flavoured creams and fruits and so on. So uh, that's coming up a little bit later in the show. At the moment, have a look at the Banjo Patterson Cottage Restaurant on, uh, on the Parramatta River. Banjo Patterson, who's best known for writing Walsing Matilda, lived in this sandstone cottage, which was converted from an oil refinery and now into a fine dining restaurant. You'll find the restaurant at the end of a dead end street leading down to the Parramatta River, only about 20 minutes from the centre of Sydney. It's a great place for a relaxing weekend lunch or dinner anytime. A slab of Angus steak gets seasoned and oiled and then tossed onto the char grill. Make your cross hatch pattern on the server side and only turn the meat over once when it's done. Heat Australian olive oil in a wok and cook the oyster, Swiss brown and shiitake mushrooms until their juices run. Add macadamia nut pieces for texture and richness. While the greens are blanching, finish the sauce with cold butter, salt and pepper. A splash of red wine or port is okay here too. This is a really simple dish, centred on the flavours of the high quality meat. Macadamia nuts also feature in our dessert, which is a frozen macadamia nut nougat. While nougat, or as they say in North America, nougat, is made with sugar, honey and nuts. This frozen nougat includes finely whipped egg whites which are sweetened with sugar and then folded into whipped cream. Add the nuts and spoon into a dish lined with plastic wrap which makes it easy to serve once the dish is frozen. It's 
served with raspberries and a raspberry syrup. Today on the barbecue, what we're going to be doing is chiring some corn, some sweet corn of Australia. We're going to be crushing that with native Australian wildfire spice. Wildfire has a lot of pungent aromatic flavours. What I'd like to do is run you through the flavours and we're going to make our own mix up today. We'll start over here. We've got some native pepper leaf. This, this pepper leaf is native to Australia. It's from the highlands of the, or the high country and Tasmania. So we're going to throw a small portion of that into the bowl. Also, the fruit, the fruit of the same tree, we, we will be using that. So add a small quantity of that, about 50-50 ratio. Not too much, it is quite hot. With the salt, we want about 5 to 6% salt in that mixture. A little bit of the lemon aspen fruit. The lemon aspen is the similar to native grapefruit, so we'll throw that in the bowl. A touch of wild thyme. Wild thyme is a bushy thyme flavour with a little bit of, of tarragon. So we'll stick that in there. And for a bit of colour, we'll use some paprika. Sweet paprika and hot paprika, just to contrast. Put a touch in there. There we go. Mix that around. Got a lot of vibrant colours there. I wish you guys could smell it. It's so good. What we do is we'll sprinkle it over the corn. Bit of olive oil. And then straight on the barbecue. And Benjamin, what are you doing, mate? Well, I'm going to do a, uh, a cadre crusted ribeye steak. And there's Australian steaks marbling and uh, about two or three hundred grams there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by using some of the bush tomato, the cadre, putting it on the uh, Platter. So Kajra, just to show you, maybe we can get a close-up just there on that um, the uh, bush tomato itself. It's, a, it's sometimes also called a desert raisin. There we go there, just show that. So they look like sultanas or raisins, um, hence the common name desert raisin occasionally, but a Kajra has a, the pungent flavour. It's, uh, it's almost concentrated tomato. So what we're going to do is we basically put the steak straight down onto the Kajra, pressing it down. Turn it over, get a bit more. So we want that caramel flavours and the tamarillo flavours to come through when we're grilling the steak. There's quite a high sugar in um, the akajra as well. Natural, all the natural sugars, not really sweet sugars, but just um, fruit sugars that have that, uh, that interesting um, characteristic of being able to give a bit of blackening to the end of the, uh, the steak as it's well. It'd be a bit like the Cajun, I guess. But we don't want to over have the, pot, the, the pan too hot, otherwise it's going to burn. Yep. And the uh, broccolini, you should say a little bit about that too, because uh, it's, a, it's a vegetable that's now used, uh, it's exclusively bred in Australia. And, um, it's a hybrid of uh, asparagus and broccoli. And you and can eat the whole thing, the and whole it's still got all your anti-cancer compounds and really great, uh, great vegetable to eat and it's regularly. Different, innovative, different, and it's from Australia. The, so, um, and the mushrooms that you're using? The mushrooms are shiitake mushrooms, and we're simply just going to slice those down and saute them in the pan with the broccoli. And the wattle? The wattle seed is for the, the sauce we're going to be making today. The wattle seed we've spoken about before is a mixture of coffee and hazelnut flavours from the acacia tree. Yep, so what you're just using to enhance the, uh, the, the stock when you're ready to go. Just normal beef stock. We're going to make it as a normal sauce, but enhance it with, with wattle. Great, great. So um, I'll just uh, also quickly elaborate on a few of the dishes, the dessert, a uh, few of the components of the dessert. The, um, Interesting thing is we've got so many fruits these days that are coming off uh, things like blueberries um, that are now um, talking over the, the sizzle. <laughs> blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. They're just standard conventional fruits, which these days, the way they're bred, some of them start to lack a little bit of flavour. So we have an Australian herb that by adding to conventional fruits, you'll be able to, just a simple green herb, it's called forest berry herb, and adding that 
to these conventional fruits actually brings back their flavour. It really intensifies, it, it enhances the fruitiness. Um, and that will be uh, also complemented through the cream and fat and fruit, obviously, is a great combination. And uh, that, again, makes for a, a fantastic dessert. I'm using um, maple and ironwood syrup. So this is a maple syrup base, and you can use maple as a substitute, just straight maple. But the, um, the, the, the benefit of this is that I've, again, added a little bit of lemon myrtle in oil form to add some lemon notes to maple syrup. You could get by by putting a twist of lemon juice in a maple syrup, but it'd work reasonably well. We're using a basic Madeira cake as well, and um, cutting boomerangs out of it, and uh, plating up the dessert fairly promptly from there. So while we carry on with our preparation, our regular feature is the Great South Pacific Railways, Australia's Orient Express trip. So have a look at this. Here's a great dessert in the making. I don't know about you, but I always look to the dessert menu first so that I get a feel for how much I should order and still get through to the business end of the meal. First off, the nutty, coffee-like wattle seed tules are cooked off and the adult, bitter Mexican chocolate mousse is dressed with a syrupy compote of summer fruits. This is pure indulgence, but what else are the guests here for? Is this a work of art or what? Right, the corn's just about <coughs> cooked, it's sizzling away nicely. While that was happening and the boys are working out the front, I've just thrown together a little bit of chicken, lemon myrtle leaves, chilli and ginger. Some of the ginger coming out of Queensland is great. Now with this um, dish, we've added a little bit of polenta cornmeal to accompany the um, corn on the barbecue contrast of flavours as well as a likeness of flavour. We're going to finish this dish with some coconut cream. Just add a little bit of that in there. Such a wonderful flavour, it really is. And we're going to put some bunion nuts in there. While I'm doing that, we'll see what Ben's doing. Well, the steaks are just about medium there. So we'll take them off to rest them, which allows the, uh, the meats to relax. So when you judge a steak as medium, I mean, do you do the old hand? I do. Okay. Yeah. Can you want to explain that? Sure. Well, the Just meat quickly. is likened to uh, the different doneness of your uh, of the steak. So if you use your, uh, I don't know what you call palm it, palm your hand, palm, yeah. and just press on there, and that's similar. Can we get a to... close up of this just to pick it up, and we'll uh, have a just a bit of a show. So using the, the finger closest to the thumb yep. is rare, yep. and working through all the fingers, medium well, medium, medium well, and well done. That makes so it that's easier. as the muscle tightens up, it actually gives you the texture or the, re the resistance. The steak. Simulates Dunness. the resistance of the doneness. So you feel that and you feel that. So you see all the apprentice chefs going like this to all check. The time. <laughs> that's great. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so we've, the sauce has been reduced there now, and we're going to uh, start off by cooking the broccoli. A little bit of oil in the pan. We're going to uh, put the broccolini in, and we're going to use a bit of rainforest rub. And Put, put some uh, pickled ginger in there as well. So our rainforest rub is, is a term I've coined for a range of flavours that, uh, that come from the rainforest. So we've got things like lemon myrtle, lemon aspen in powdered form. Um, there's a bit of aniseed myrtle as well, which is another Australian seasoning. And so all these flavours are adding citrus notes. They're adding um, oh, a little bit like an, a star oh, anise. A little bit of nutty in there as well. The nut comes from the macadamia nut, which is another rainforest tree. And once that's starting to sauté, we're just going to finish it off with a bit of stock. And then I'll run through the broccoli. So in a way, you also steam Steaming the broccoli. Steaming the broccoli at the same time. And bring all the flavours back into the broccoli as well. So we should be referring to it as broccolini, because uh, it is a little bit different from broccoli. Mm. And you can eat the whole of the broccolini stalk and it's got quite a sweetness to it and not much toughness uh, as against an older broccoli head. That's one of the best things, uh, being a restaurateur, 100% usable. 100% no usable, waste. yep. So we're going to put that in and we're going to finish off by sautéing the shiitake mushrooms. Once again, a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Sautéing those. And just a little bit of seasoning of the mushrooms as well. Pretty good, mate. But what I'm going to do now is with my dish, finish it off by slicing the corn, taking the uh, caramelised corn off the husk, slice that off, 
and then we're going to add it to the mixture where we're talking about outside, the coconut cream, the cornmeal, the, or the polenta. That's got chilli and ginger in there. So here we're cooking with a Native American crop, one of the uh, top 20 foods in the world. Oh, mate, I love corn. Sweet corn soup, mate, one of my favourites. There we go. So the, the corn's in there. We're going to season it with a bit more of the wildfire spice. The wildfire spice is what we used on the corn. A touch of that for our salt. There we go. And let's have a taste of that. How's it looking? Pretty good. Bring the spoon. Mate, the mm. chilli comes across nicely. We're not going to double dip either, right? <laughs> really nice. Mm. That is good. That is good. Almost like the American Southwest with a bit of chilli and a bit of corn. <laughs> what are you up to over there, Vic? Okay, well, we're um, just uh, working more on this particular dish that, as I said before, was inspired by uh, part of the Sydney Olympic bid. Now, can we get a close-up on that? I can't obviously represent... <laughs> replicate the uh, the Olympic rings, so we've got our dining down under rings um, or signatures. To cut a, a boomerang from the uh, Madeira cake. One question, Vic, is it going to come back? <laughs> well, hopefully you'll come I'll back come for back another for serve. another one, yeah. Make yourself a little cut-out boomerang mould, little, uh, what would you call it, a stencil effectively, so that when you cut the piece of Madeira cake, this can just be store-bought sponge cake and um, that will give you a little bit of height there. I'll just leave it on the board so you can see. Um, now, what I do need to do is, um, it's a really simple dish and it was designed to be simple because we uh, had to feed several thousand people at a time and have a, a, a dessert that stood up quite quickly. And so I, here I'm just folding through the um, forest berry herb through the cream and we're pretty right almost to start plating up. We have our menu for today inspired by Banjo Patterson Cottage Restaurant, including ribeye steak with broccolini, shiitake mushrooms and wattle seed jus, braised chicken breast with corn, polenta, emu prosciutto and bunion nut dumpling and a boomerang trifle. So we're at the plating up stage of our uh, selection of Banjo's recipes. I'm finishing off my so maple syrup soaked cake. Now, this is my version of a trifle, and I've been told it's nothing to trifle with. <laughs> that was a bit corny, Vic. Sorry, mate. <laughs> what was the original uh, trifle all about? I'm sorry, mate. saying before. Oh, that's right. The, the original trifle, it comes from England, and it's laid with five different flavours, one being um, stewed fruits, the other being um, blancmange, jelly, cream, and then um, basically the sponge is soaked with some sort of liqueur. So it's actually a little different from what Australians typically regard as trifle, which is a, a three-piece sponge cake, jelly and cream mixture. That's correct, yes. And your interpretation takes it a step further as well, mate. With a few native flavours to boot. For sure. So just moving it right along. Benjamin, how are you doing with this? No, I'm just putting the mushrooms on now. Shiitake mushrooms. A little bit of the wattle seed jus. Those mushrooms so, smell great. You can catch them from over there. I'm missing them, mate. <laughs> well, you would, Vic. You like the dried variety, don't you? <laughs> now, now. Okay. Fragrance of the wattle seed coming through. Oh, yeah, the nutty, the hazelnut characteristics. It's really good. Well, I've lived up to my colour and uh, a few textures, a few aromatics and some pungence. The dessert's done. Well, how about I just put mine in the bowl as well, then? Benjamin, that's done. So we've even actually got a bit of crunch and a bit of texture from the akudja on the steak, which is interesting too. And I the broccolini always, too. Yeah, I always like to finish a dish and then analyse it as for its, uh, its texture, its aromatics, its pungence, sweetness, sourness, salt and sugar. That's the balanced, perfect dish. Can you smell the aromatics of the lemon myrtle leaf there, Vic? I can see you're putting and on the saltiness of the, uh, of the prosciutto. To balance it again. Let's, let's go, go, fellas. Let's eat. We have a guest for dinner. Good evening. Good evening. So Michelle's joined us. Oh, lovely. Oh, looks lovely. Have a bowl of soup. Thank what you. I'll do is I'll uh, you can work on our... Oh, that looks beautiful. Great. Our dessert at the end. Oh. Just recapping today's dishes. 
Mark's braised chicken broth gets its main flavour from the seasoning blend I call wildfire spice, which the guys say tastes a bit like pizza. You could use an all-purpose seasoning for chicken or a mix of peppercorns and maybe some Mediterranean herbs instead. The Akadra crust on the ribeye steak that Benjamin prepared is a bit hard to substitute. It's got such a fruity zing, you're probably best off using a spicy tomato and raisin sauce for example and changing the recipe to suit. The wattle seed in the jus could be mocked up with a bit of coffee and maybe some walnut oil. We Aussies have grown up with our various versions of trifle and this shows how a little imagination can enhance an everyday dish. Lovely. Vic, did you organise my cigar and uh, port? <laughs> and your slippers as well. <laughs> you look comfortable anyway. Oh, I need to relax, mate. It's been a hard day. Michelle, have a taste. Let me see what you yeah. think. Looks just beautiful. Mmm. Lovely. Well, she's making the right noises. That's what we want. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, we, we started at Banjos. We, uh, in fact, your old haunt. It is, yes. I used to work there uh, many moons ago, Vic. That's where we met quite some yonks. time ago. Yonks ago, that's the word. <laughs> so all of these recipes are on the website, so have a look at that. I think we've turned international cuisine upside down once again. So, till next time, Cheers. bon Cheers. appetit.